Mm -hmm. Hi, boys and girls. Hey, do you happen to know what insect we're going to learn about today? Can you guess? Bzzz. Did you say a bee? You're right. We're going to learn about bees today. And bees are very, very important to us and very helpful insects also. And we're going to find out why that's true, just like we found out with ladybugs. Now let's take a look at the body of a bee. And I'm dressed up as one today. So the bees that we're going to look at today are called honeybees because bees do make that yummy honey that we have in lots of our foods. So let's take a look and see if a bee is an insect, just like we did with ladybugs. Let's see. I have a head. I have a thorax. I have an abdomen. I have two eyes. And look, they're my compound eyes. Ooh, I see lots of you. And I have a mouth. I also have two antenna that I'm going to be smelling with. Mmm, <laughs> you guys smell pretty good. Did you have some cereal for breakfast this morning? <laughs> I could have sworn I smelled cereal. Mm. And let's see, what else do bees have? Oh, insects also have six legs. Let's see if I have six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six legs. Bees are flying insects, so let's check if I have wings. Ooh, oh yes, there are my wings on my back. Okay, I have my nice little wings. And oh, careful, don't touch that. That's my stinger. That's so that I can protect myself and protect my brother and sister bees in the hive. Speaking of my hive, would you like to go into my hive and meet some of my little bees? Okay, come with me. Let's fly on over. Ooh, here's the outside of my hive. Now we have to go in through that tiny little opening. And we have a little bee out here who's the guard. Guard, guard, guard. And he's going to sniff you and make sure that you're part of the hive and that you're friendly. Go ahead, give him a smell. Smell him with your antenna. Ooh, they're okay? Okay. He says you guys can come into our hive. You're safe. But please don't touch anything in the hive. Now, I would like to introduce myself. I am the queen bee. The queen is the one that's in charge of the whole hive. And the group of bees that you're going to meet, this group is called a colony. That's what all bees are called when they're in a big group. It's called a colony of bees. And we live in a hive. All right, so come on in and explore our hive. Here we are inside our beehive. Hmm. Take a look at the shape of some of those little cells or rooms that we have. They are called cells and they're shaped like a hexagon. Now a hexagon is something that has six sides to it. And we have some bees that are responsible for making those little hexagons and they're made out of wax. And guess what? The bees make the beeswax too. So let me just show you, if I were a bee that was making those little cells, I would have to, <laughs> I'm just kidding, bees don't really use tools. The bees have to make this shape called a hexagon. And I made one of these just out of paper to show you. But they have six sides, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides on a hexagon and each one hooks together just perfectly so there's no space in between. Aren't bees amazing? And we have bees that are doing that job all the time so they can make more and more cells or rooms in our hive. Now there's a reason we need so many rooms in our hive. As you could see, there was a lot going on in there. So let me show you some of the other things going on. I'm going to tip my camera down a little bit so you can see inside my hive. In this cell, the queen bee, which is me today, is the only one in the hive. There's only one queen, and that queen is responsible for laying eggs. And the eggs look like tiny little pieces of white rice. They're very, very tiny and very small. So the queen lays one egg in each cell of the hive, of the honeycomb. Now, 
These bees are at different stages of their life. Those bees are just the eggs. That's stage number one. Some of the bees have grown a little bit. They've come out of their egg and they are in the larva stage. Kind of looks like a tiny little curled up worm, doesn't it? That's the larva stage of a bee. That's stage two. Now there are nurse bees, little worker bees that are taking care of the other bees. These bees right here may be nurse bees. Now the nurse bees are all girls. All the bees that are working in the hive are girls. The boys don't do any of this work. I'll tell you about the boys in a little bit. But every bee that you see on a flower or going into a hive, those are all the worker bees and they are all female. They're all girls. So we have some of these bees that are responsible for being the nurse bees and taking care of all of the babies. So go ahead, bee, take care of the baby. <laughs> Just kidding again. They don't use baby bottles. They feed the babies some of the pollen and some of the honey that's in the hive. So feed those babies. So that's what the nurse bee's job is. Thank you, nurse bee, for taking care of those babies. Now, as the larvae start to grow, they start to also go into that pupa stage where they don't need to be fed so much anymore. And they're actually gonna be capped off and they're gonna just stay inside of there so they can finish growing. So here's the pupa stage. As you can see, they no longer look like just the little worms. Now they've started to grow their six legs because they are gonna have six legs. They are an insect. They've started to grow their compound eyes and they've started to grow their wings. Wow. So some of the bees are in the pupa stage right now. Now there are some other things in here that aren't bees. We have some pollen that the bees collected from the flowers because bees need the pollen to make their honey. And we also have some of the honey, the sticky, sweet, gooey treat that we can eat on our oatmeal or we can put it on, um, put it in our tea or it's even in Honey Nut Cheerios if you like to eat Honey Nut Cheerios. So I'm pretending my little pom-pom balls are honey. So the bees make the honey all by themselves. God made them that way, that inside their body, they can make the honey and then they put it into their little, into their little cells. And they use that honey to survive through the winter because bees hibernate in the winter time. They go inside their hive. There's really no flowers for them to go get pollen or nectar from. They drink the sweet nectar out of those flowers. We'll show you that in a few minutes too. And that's how they come back to their hive and make their honey. They need their pollen, they need their nectar to make into their honey. And some of the pollen they keep to feed the babies and to feed themselves too, because they do like to eat pollen also, not only honey and nectar. All right, so let's see, what else can we tell you? Oh, also we have some bees that work in this hive. I'm gonna borrow you for a minute. Some of the worker bees will be cleaning the hive taking out anything that's dirty or any of the little bees who maybe didn't make it, they'll get rid of those things. If a, if a little cell gets some dirt in it or something or somebody goes potty in there, that bee will clean that out. Now, do you think that bee uses a broom? No, they don't. They just use their bodies. They have everything they need right in their little bodies. Now, the other thing the bees do is they have their own air conditioning and heating system inside of their hive. When it's really, really freezing cold outside, the little bees huddle all together and they stay real close to each other. When it's really, really hot outside, they use their wings to fan and keep the hive cool to keep the babies and the queen comfortable. So that's what these little worker bees, they have their own heating and cooling system. Again, pretty amazing creatures. Now, I promised to tell you about the drones. The drones are the boy bees. And the boy bees, their only job is to fly out of the hive and to help another queen from a different hive have their babies. That's their only job. And then you know what happens to them afterwards? They die. They don't survive very long at all. Now, if they do happen to survive, 
they can come back into their hive. They're allowed to come back in, but they're like the last ones to get fed if they're starting to run out of food. So the male bees are only important so that they can help the queen to lay her eggs, and then they're not so important anymore. But if we wouldn't have the male bees, the drones, we couldn't have any little baby bees and the hive would not survive. So we need every single bee doing every single job that they do. They're pretty special. All right, so let's see. We learned about the hive and all the different things that are inside. We learned about the shape of the cells that they make. We learned that honeybees gather nectar from flowers and they make their own honey. They make their own beeswax to make their cells for their hive. Let's see how a bee knows where to go to get some nectar from a flower. I'm going to just move my hive right off of here and I'm going to bring some flowers over. I'm going to pretend this is a little flower garden. There we go. We'll set up some nice little flowers in our garden. We'll set them up right there. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit now so you can see a little bit better. Oops, I need to let my flowers down for a minute. There we go. Okay, here's my little flower garden. Now what happens is the bees that are the ones that go out foraging and looking for flowers, they fly out of the hive. So this bee is going to be leaving the hive right now. Here she goes. And remember, it's a girl. She's a worker bee. And ooh, she found some good flowers. So what she does is she lands on a flower and she tastes it. She tastes it with her antenna. She smells it with her antenna. And then she sticks out her little tongue. It's called a proboscis. Can you say that word? Proboscis. And her proboscis is kind of like a straw. So she sticks that down into the flower, sticks out her tongue, which is like a straw, and she sucks the sweet, juicy nectar into her body and she swallows it down into her little honey tummy. And then she also collects some pollen as she's walking on these flowers. She gets some of that little yellow dust on her little legs, on her six little legs. She carries that back to the hive. So that's how the pollen gets back to the hive to go into some of those cells so that they have food for later. And then she takes that sweet nectar that she drank and she and other bees that are honey-making bees make that nectar into honey. Some of the nectar she drinks and she eats for herself, but the other she puts back in the hive to share with everybody else. Bees really work together. Now, if it weren't for bees, we would not have those beautiful flowers. If it weren't for bees, pollinating the flowers, taking pollen from one flower to another as they walk on the flowers, we wouldn't have apples or oranges or any of that wonderful fruit that grows on plants. Because those plants grow flowers and then those flowers turn into fruit. So we really, really need bees. Without bees, our plants wouldn't grow, our fruit wouldn't grow, and we wouldn't have all of that wonderful fruit to eat. So bees are really, really important. They also help the flowers grow too. They spread the pollen, the boy flowers and the girl flowers, they spread that pollen and make flowers grow. So bees are very, very special and very, very important. And I hope you learned a little bit more about them today. Now I have to get back to my colony because they need their queen. She really stays in the colony a lot. It was so good meeting you boys and girls and seeing all of you. Now the one thing I want to tell you, my bees, they also will not sting you unless they're scared. If bees get scared or if they get stepped on or kneeled on, that's when they sting. Or if somebody is threatening their hive. Like if you get too close to a beehive and they think that you're going to try to break in there, they know that you're not another bee. They know that you're not part of their hive. So then they would sting. But generally speaking, they don't want to sting you because you know what happens when a bee stings us? The bee dies because his little stinger comes out and then he dies. He can't live without his stinger. So bees are really nothing to be afraid of. You just leave them alone. They'll leave you alone, 
and we can all live happily together and we can enjoy those beautiful flowers that they help make and the beautiful fruit that we enjoy eating and the delicious honey that we have as a treat sometimes. So thank you for learning about bees with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.